This is a brief history of computers by Jessica Harris for EDUC 515 with Professor McKendricks at Azusa Pacific University for the Digital Teaching and Learning Program in Spring 1 of 2011. Computers have come a long way since the beginning. The very first sign of computing technology was with the invention of the abacus around 3000 BC. Since then, the creation of the slide rule, calculators, and punch card machines paved the way for computer technologies. The first real computer was produced by Konrad Zuse in 1936, just before World War II. The German government enlisted Zuse's invention, the Z1, to help in the war effort. Meanwhile, in the United States, John Atanasoff and Clifford Berry developed the ABC computer in 1942. The United States Army also wanted a piece of new technology. They hired John Mockley and J. Presper Eckert to build a calculating machine. Mockley and Eckert worked very hard that year to design the ENIAC, or the Electronic Numeric Integrator and Computer. They were able to finish ENIAC in 1945 after World War II was over, and it was on June 26th of 1947 that they received a patent for the computer. It cost $500,000 to build the ENIAC, and it took up 1,800 feet of space and weighed 30 tons. Since the ENIAC, there have been numerous advancements in technology. In 1947, Walter Burton discovered that silicone circuits function well underwater. So with the help of some of his colleagues, he developed a transistor. This invention led to smaller parts and less need of vacuum tubes. Less bulky parts means smaller computers. In 1956, IBM introduced the RAMAC 305, which had a hard drive that stored 5 megabytes. By today's standards, 5 megabytes is very little storage, but it was the beginning. Texas Instruments continued working on parts and in 1958, they built the first silicone chip. This invention reduced the need for large amounts of electrical components and further condensed the size of computers. Advancements like the silicone chip caught the attention of some companies who then started building home computers. For example, Honeywell, a home heating company, decided to make the Honeywell kitchen computer and sold it for $10,600. It even had a built-in cutting board so there was no loss of kitchen space. In the early 1970s, personal computers or PCs hit the market. They included the Altair, the Mark 8, and the Apple I. Around the same time, companies were also experimenting with the first laptop computers. Adam Osborne created the first laptop in 1981, which he named the Osborne One. This computer had a 5-inch screen, a modem port, and a battery pack. In 1983, Apple introduced the Macintosh computer, which has grown very popular. Macs are often used today for making movies, recording audio, and graphic arts. Mac PowerBooks were introduced to the market in 1991 and weighed 5 pounds. The evolution of technology is all about getting better, faster, and smaller. In order to make computer technology more portable, personal digital assistants, or PDAs, were created in 1990. These handheld computers allowed consumers to access the internet through a phone link. Similar handheld devices continue to be produced and perfected. Computers are evolving into a touchscreen generation where separate keyboards and computer mice are no longer necessary. The iPad was released to consumers in January of 2010. This product allows consumers to surf the web, check email, create documents, play games, and watch movies all with the touch of your finger and at high speeds. But Apple is not the only touchscreen technology on the market. The Samsung Galaxy Tab, Toshiba Folio, and Dell's Streak tablet are all very comparable to the iPad technology. We use computers on a daily basis with everything from a coffee maker, your car, and phone. Even the food you eat has been processed by computerized machines. So where are computers headed in the future? Technology evolves so fast, it's hard to tell. One thing is for sure though, 
The future holds endless possibilities. This has been A Brief History on Computers by Jessica Harris. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to check out my other podcasts and videos on my website at www.jessicaharris.webs.com. Thank you.